Hello and welcome to another video. So I guess this is week five now. Um, everything's going pretty well. I'm happy with how things are progressing. Um, I'm happy with getting, continuing to upload this series. Um, I thought I would have fallen off by this point, but I'm really trying to hold myself accountable um, and just make sure that you know I can film this whole process because I think it'll be really good to look back on and uh, maybe for some of you guys to watch and really see you know, maybe some of the challenges that are more nuanced and not discussed as readily. Um, so, yeah, it's good stuff. So overall, this was a good week. Um, kind of struggled to get, to get going with it. Um, the first training day, um, I was meant to work up to a double at RP9, um, and this was going to be 685 because I did 683 uh, the previous week, and that was at RP8. Um, and so I really wanted to... 673, I meant... That was confusing um but i really wanted to you know progress and hit that number um unfortunately just wasn't there on the day um i did 661 for a double right before then we jumped up to 685 um for the second double um, and i just wasn't able to finish the second rep uh, i kind of let myself get distracted by my environment again um and you know that's really something you want to try and avoid um, you really want to try and keep that mental headspace um you know your palace of fortitude type thing um and so you, you know really need to be working to make sure you can keep that going um i know a lot of people are able to do that and are very good at it and i think having a strong athletic background does help with that um i think you know i used to be pretty good at it but i've let myself um become too accustomed to having good training environments um or just you know having that higher intensity um then being able to focus on that you know so like when you have a single, I find that it's a lot easier to concentrate um, and it's a lot easier to focus on that, but really you need to be doing that for all your rep work. Um, I know a lot of my clients are really good at doing this, um, but I think I kind of just let that slip away. Um, and this on this day that kind of showed and it was an issue because I obviously missed the second rep, which we should have easily been there considering the speed of the previous rep and the, the speed of the double that I did before that. But regardless, it was a good day. Um, my previous uh, tempo squats were good. Uh, bench went really well the following day um, Nothing really to comment about that except I'm really happy with my bench progress so far. I've kind of gone from uh, Doing 320 for a single and that being good single weight um, to being able to do it for a set of five uh, Or several sets of five in this case, which I think is really awesome And then I was able to finish up the week on bench with uh, 350 for some doubles well one double and then uh, 345 for my other doubles so it's good as well. Um, and squats were moving well. I worked up to 475 for a set of five and 515 for a set of two. So all in all very good there. And tempo squats are still moving at a phenomenal pace. So I'm very happy with that. I'm not really trying to push those, especially as I'm transitioning into doing uh, poor squats in this next coming block. So, you know, the, obviously the less priority lifts, but I'm going to be kind of playing around with some of my programming in that. I'm going to be pushing the uh, accessory lifts um, instead of them prior instead of the main lifts um, obviously you're still going to be progressing them and pushing them um, but my main I guess you could say intensity work is going to come from the accessory lifts um, just so I can kind of lower some of that fatigue that's going to come from that and really try not to push the intensity too high um, because I do have a little bit of a problem with doing that consistently and um, I find that if I know there's more in the tank I will try and find out how much more there is in the tank um, especially if I have several weeks to progress that and I really don't want to do that too much especially as I want to focus on volume in this block and the next block and then you know start preparing for me after that so I have a little bit more time um, than perhaps mentally I conceptualize so I need to make sure I'm doing that and also I've got you know just a lot of stress going on in my life in general at the moment um, and so you need to be making sure that you're balancing all these things um, and focusing on recovering efficiently and getting some good training in as well um, and I think this is going to help me as well in terms of just increasing my skill acquisition, especially in a more difficult variant of the lift um, and still getting some good volume in um, and some good focus to work as well. Um, you know, obviously with training with the frequency that I do, um, I'm training my squat three times a week and my bench three times a week. And this next block, I'll be dropping my deadlift down to twice a week. Um, it's obviously a lot of frequency, a considerable amount of volume. So you're not really in too much of a, of a negative position in terms of losing some skill acquisition there. Obviously, maybe with the, the singles I will, but I haven't been doing singles in my main list either, so it's not really too much of a loss. And obviously, those will start to come back as I get closer to competing again. Um, so I'm just kind of running things out right now. Um, I'm going to just do a run out meet in April. Nothing serious. I'm not prepping for it. 
um, and that's just going to be really just to test the waters and see where we're at. Um, it'll be on a deadlift bar as well, so you know, as I talked about before, it's at my old university. It's really just a bit of fun, and I'll be able to compete with my girlfriend as well, which I think will be cool. Um, so, you know, really just trying to find that enjoyment there um, and not prioritizing competing in every single opportunity, you know, because I think a lot of people have um, a problem in where they might compete four times a year, but they believe that every single one of those four meets has to be their best performance. And that's not always the case. I think, you know, sometimes it might be that you're able to continue to progress that much and you're spacing them out to a point to a, in a way that it's going to allow you to push for every single meet. But I don't know if that's the most productive way to do things. You know, if you have a really big meet that you're working towards at the end of the year, then you need to be prioritizing that, uh, prioritizing the qualification for it as well, maybe. Um, but those other two meets or, you know, the other meet that you're going to do, doesn't necessarily need to be as important. Um, so for me, this meet in April is really just going to be a bit of fun, a uh, good time, you know, just see where I'm at with everything. Um, and then I'm really going to be prioritizing the meet I'm going to do in June. Um, and then ultimately with the goal of prioritizing competing at US Nationals in October. And then maybe doing another meet between that and the Arnold in 2019. Um, so really, but that meet wouldn't be a priority. That would just be a bit of fun um, and already just line up my slot for the next Nationals type thing. Um, so it's not really a big deal. You have to prioritize certain things. Again, like within your training, you have to prioritize certain days um, and you have to prioritize certain movements because you can't really have everything. You know, the, the old phrase goes, uh, jack of all trades, master of none. And it's true, you can't uh, make every single day your best day. It's not gonna happen unless you have unbelievable recovery. You're sleeping 12 hours a night and you're eating 10,000 calories a day. Um, it's very difficult to make that happen. And even so your training should be coordinated in a way that you're able to recover in between sessions and certain sessions are prioritized so you can get the best out of them. Um, Cause if every session, you know, this is why programs like five by five don't work um, as effectively as they could because the intensity is the same throughout the week. You know, using a daily undulating periodization uh, approach where you're having different days with different focuses kind of allows you to recover a bit more a bit more efficiently. You know, if you have your heavy day on Monday, let's say just a three-day program with one leg, for example, so you have your heavy squat day on Monday, and then on Wednesday, you, you might have a hypertrophy day, uh, so that on Friday you can have a volume day and still be able to do quite a lot of volume with a good level of intensity because you've put that middle day in that has a lower intensity and a lower volume. Um, well, the volume would be higher, but you'd have less sets perhaps. Um, and this would allow you to recover in a way that would, you know, prioritize that Friday and you'd still have the benefit of that Monday. So you've got two really solid days in there. And then that third day is giving you an additional benefit of some extra hypertrophy and also allowing you to recover in between the two. And um, I think a lot of people are like, have this approach where every single day has to be the biggest day. Every single day is the meat type mentality thing, right? Which is good. You need to have that type of focus. But at the same time, you also need to accept that some days are just less important. That's just the nature of things. Um, and so working out how your body is going to respond the best is, is the key factor in determining that progress over time. Um, and I think I'm finally coming towards that and I'm really understanding that. And having these uh, accessory lifts in is helping. Um, and hopefully doing this training blog where I'm not, pro I'm not prioritizing my main lifts as much um, will kind of allow me to get some more focus in there, find maybe some more of my weaknesses um, and really just you know, balance everything out so that I'm getting the best training effect I possibly can. Um, but you know, that's really the theory behind it. I know a lot of people have done this in their training before. It's not crazy out there, but it's a little bit different from what I'm used to doing, but I think experimentation is very important and a very useful tool. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And obviously uh, my training blocks now are only about three weeks and then I have that little light week on the fourth week. Um, and I think that's worked really well for me. I'm feeling the most recovered I have um, in a long time and I'm able to kind of push more weights than I normally would. Um, so I'm able to keep my training a little bit more intense, which I prefer. Um, I find it a lot more enjoyable and I think I get more out of it. So overall, it's all good. Um, I'm excited for this coming week. I think it's going to be really awesome. Um, I've got my light week and I've got three singles, um, all RP8. So hopefully um, we're going to hit some PRs, I think. Um, not going to try and push anything, but I think you know some numbers that I've been chasing for a while are going to be there. Um, I'm hoping that they will be. We'll see um, that 551 squat might finally go down. I mean, it really should because I'm able to squat. You know, I could have done 500 for a set of five last week, really. <laughs> and if there was an extra week in my training block, I probably would have done that. Um, but obviously, you know, there isn't, so I'm not going to push that. But I think that number's really going to be there. Um, and I'm just really excited for a lot of things in my life are kind of finally coming together. So I think that's really cool. Um, you know, I'm really working on getting... Uh, 
visa sponsorship in the US um, via employment. So that might be happening. I um, don't want to put too much pressure on myself, but that's kind of coming together. And I think these external factors can really help um, align your training and get everything sort of fixed um, and lined up. And I think, you know, when I found out that it might be happening and I've got the opportunity to do it, um, you know, I kind of felt clarity in my headspace and I was able to focus on my training a little bit more and I wasn't as distracted as I have been. Um, so I think that's really cool. Um, and it's really important to try and separate those things and make sure that when you go into the gym, your head is in the game and you're able to have that clarity. Um, you know, I really am a big proponent of kind of just putting your phone to the side um, and doing what you can to stay in the moment. Um, and obviously having a good training environment plays into that. I mean, that's definitely something, the mentality side of things is something I'll talk more about uh, next week after I've done these singles, because um, that kind of ties in a bit more to uh, to those singles. So I think it'll be good. Um, I'm very excited and hopefully you'll watch the next video too and you'll enjoy that. Um, so please go ahead, um, subscribe, like, comment, uh, email me if you're interested in coaching, anything like that. Um, we also have a really good blog on the website, so it's definitely worth a read. Um, I'd go into a lot more of the mentality side of things um, and just talk a little bit more about, I guess, the technicalities of powerlifting versus this, which is really just more opinion-based stuff. Um, so if you're interested in that type of thing, do that. Um, and if you guys are interested in me talking more about uh, the mentality side of things or anything else on this YouTube channel, uh, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. I've um, been having a lot of good support in these videos, so hopefully that keeps up. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next week.